Hey guys, this is Woodshop Junkies and today I'm doing a single phase conversion on my recently acquired Watkin Burr's Green table saw. For those who don't know, I recently got my hands on a Watkin Burr's Green cabinet saw, but it's in bad shape and before I can commit to restoring and repairing it, I need to get it running first. To do this, I need to convert the existing three phase setup or configuration to single phase because I obviously don't have a three-phase supply here at my home workshop. Now the two most practical solutions is either replacing the existing three-phase motor with a single-phase motor or using a VFD or variable frequency drive. It is also often called a frequency converter which will give me the ability to use my single-phase supply to run a three-phase motor. Now I chose replacing the motor despite a VFD being the favorite option based on the comments I received in my previous video. But before I get to the conversion I want to talk about why I chose replacing the motor over using a VFD. Using a VFD has a number of advantages. Firstly, though it isn't the case in my country, it is often a cheaper alternative than replacing the motor. Then using a drive offers a range of control and monitoring options like a soft start or a ramp down option. It also offers overload protection and the ability to overclock with regards to speed. The downside of using a VFD, the initial electrical installation and programming can be complicated and requires a basic know-how of electricity and induction motors. Also, because drives are electronic units or basically purpose-built computers, they are very sensitive to ambient conditions or things like power spikes and surges. Now, being an electrical technician, the installation and setup wasn't much of a deterrent for me, but I still chose replacing the motor over using a drive for a number of reasons. Firstly, is for efficiency through simplicity. Replacing the motor makes for a much cleaner overall design and keeping things simple means less components and wiring to maintain. Secondly, by replacing the motor means I can upgrade on power. With a VFD I can bump the RPM but I can't increase power output. So, by replacing the motor I have the ability to replace the existing 2 horsepower motor with a new 3 horsepower. So, with my mind made up, I need to get to mounting the motor, but before I do, I'm going to remove the top on the saw to give you guys a better view of what I'm doing. Right, so the motor is going to be mounted upside down on this plate over here so that the pulley aligns with the pulley on the spindle. But because the new motor's base or mounting is slightly different than the old one, I'm going to take this plate off to drill new holes.
Right, so that's the motor fitted to the plate, but before I can put it back onto the saw, I first need to install the pulley. As you can see, however, the new rotor shaft is considerably thicker than the old one. So if I wanted to reuse this pulley, I would need to have it bored out and a new keyway cut. Instead of doing this, however, I was able to find a standard, inexpensive pulley off the shelf with a taper lock bush and key to fit this shaft. Right, all that's left now is to put a power cord in here and then I can get the assembly back onto the saw. Right guys, so that's the motor installed and everything looks in order. Now for the purpose of testing it, I'm going to power it straight from my wall socket, which is obviously not how I'm going to be using it. I still need to replace the direct online start or safety start switch, as this one is still configured for 380 volt and I'm obviously going to be using 220 volt now. But I will do that when I do the final assembly of the saw after refurbishing all the components. And that's my single phase conversion. Fairly straightforward, new motor, new pulley, and I'll obviously replace the start switch at some point as well. But I'm really excited about this project. I'm going to start stripping down the saw to its bare components to clean everything up, repair what needs to be repaired, and then I can assemble my new saw. But that is going to have to be it for this video. As I mentioned, I'm really excited about this project and I think with a little bit of repair and a fresh coat of paint, this saw is going to be a fantastic addition to my shop. If you want to see that, remember to subscribe. But for now, thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Cheers.